Hey guys, so in today's video, we're going to go over undeposited funds account. What is undeposited funds account? How to use it accurately to avoid any kind of mess in QuickBooks and why it's important to use it that way. But before we get to that, please do subscribe to the channel. Okay, thank you. Let's get started. Okay, so what is undeposited funds account? Undeposited funds account in QuickBooks Online is a temporary holding account which is used to group the payments you have received from your clients or customers but haven't been deposited in the bank yet. So it's it's temporary. It's like your drawer. You know, you get a payment from one client, you put it in your drawer, uh, get a check from second client, you put it in the drawer until you are ready to go to the bank with cash and checks, whatever, and deposit them into the bank. Okay, so I'm going to show you three different examples of how to use undeposited funds account with like three different uh, payment methods. So cash, check, and credit cards. So let's go over the check one first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my customer center, pick some unpaid invoices and receive payments on those. Okay, let's pick this one. So first we're going to do check payment. So let's say from this client we got check payment for these two invoices. And that is $10,000 right here. We're going to put it into undeposited funds account. Okay, save and close. Now again, now we received cash payment from another client. So we say it's cash payment. It's going into undeposited funds account. It's for one invoice. Okay, save and close. It's all going to undeposited funds account. Now we are going to also receive credit card payments. I'm not processing any credit cards. I'm, I'm going to assume show. it's credit card payment. So it's for these two invoices. Let's do one invoice at a time. So credit card payment, undeposited funds account. Then we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do another payment with credit card. Okay, undeposited funds account. Okay, save. Okay, now at the end of the day, I am ready to take my cash and checks to the bank and deposit them. Okay, so let's say I, I went to the bank, I deposited my checks and cash in different batches. Um, let's record it in QuickBooks now. So I'm going to go to new bank deposit. So I am going to record this check and cash. I'm going to, I deposited these two check and cash on one deposit slip. So I picked the right date. I picked those two, one check, one cash total is 13,400. Yes. That's the total of my deposit slip. I am going to record it. Now I'm going to do save and new because I'm going to show you the other payments too. Okay. Then we are going to record. Okay, let's do the credit card one. Then I'll show you another one. So then we take this, these credit card ones. Now credit card ones don't come in right away, right? It takes a day or two to get the money from the credit card companies. And most of the time, credit card companies do not give you full amount. They give you whatever your total was minus the fee. So let's do that. So whatever the credit card company name is, let's say it's um, into it. I'm going to create them as vendor, save, and I'm going to say it's fees, uh, merchant service fee. Yep. That's the account it's called. Now, instead of $2,000, I only got like $19.50. So I am going to record a $50 fee here and the total here should be $19.50 only. So I'm going to do save and close. I do want to show you another case where let's say you received a payment from a client on check. Okay, for $500, save. When we went to the bank, there's another check we received. Let's say it's a tax refund check. Okay, now how do we do that? We can't put it into undeposited funds account. It's not going to go towards a customer account or anything. So just click on new and bank deposit. Pick this payment. Okay, along with this $500 check, I got a $1,000 tax refund check as well. So I deposited that on the same deposit, uh, deposit slip. So I am going to say I received the check from, let's say, IRS. They are my vendor and it's a business tax refund check. So let's say it's a refund for payroll taxes. Okay. Pick that account, payroll taxes, whatever the account is, whatever type of taxes you got back. Amount is a thousand dollars. And I would put here, like this is a check and this, the reference number is one, two, three, four, whatever the uh, check number is. So here, this, these payments include this section. This section includes the payments sitting in undeposited funds account. And this is anything, add funds to this deposit. This is anything that has not been recorded yet in QuickBooks as undeposited funds. So this I am adding. This is my tax refund check. Okay, my total was 1500. Perfect, save and close. 
Now, why did we do it this way? Why not just post all the payments to bank account directly? The reason is if you do that, you know how we receive the check for like $500, then $1,000, but we put them into like one deposit slip, $1,500. When you reconcile your bank account at the end of the month and you look at your bank statement, your bank statement is going to show $1,500 deposit, not $500,000. And it's not always as easy as like to just two checks and you're able to figure it out. Oh, I know this was $500 from my customer and $1,000 from the tax refund. You're not going to remember all that. Okay. And there could be like 10 checks on one deposit slips too. And there could be like a weird random amounts too. They're not going to be even amounts all the time. So yes. Yeah, so use undeposited funds account as a holding account where you put all individual cost client payments, right? And then take those and group them the same way that they are grouped in uh, a deposit in your deposit slips. Okay. And then put them into the bank account in QuickBooks. And when you do that, it's super easy to reconcile your deposits at that time. Okay. You show 1500 in QuickBooks, 1500 in the bank statement, very easy to reconcile. That's the reason we use the undeposited funds account. Okay. Trust me, if you use it this way, it's going to make your life much easier. Okay. You're not going to have any, this undeposited funds account mess in QuickBooks. Um, okay. So that's it on undeposited funds account. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll try my best to respond ASAP. Thank you and happy accounting.